Well, howdy everyone, and this is a historic moment for my YouTube channel, as after years of requests, I'm testing out my first ever Nikon camera lens. I recently invested in a Nikon Z7 mirrorless camera with its lovely 45 megapixel full frame sensor, and here we have the official kit lens, the Nikkor Z 24-70mm f4s. It will only work on Nikon's mirrorless Z mount cameras. If you buy it as part of a camera kit, it'll set you back about £500. If you buy it separately, then in the US its price is a slightly ridiculous $1,000, and in the UK it'll cost you about six or £700, so not much better really. It definitely makes more sense to buy this along with your camera. Now, 24-70mm is not an especially ambitious zoom range on a full frame camera, but at least 24mm is a nice wide starting point. If you do zoom in and shoot at f4, then you can get noticeably out of focus backgrounds too, particularly if you shoot close up. The maximum aperture of f4 lets in a reasonable amount of light, but you wouldn't want to rely on it for shooting in darker situations. In common with other kit lenses you see on the market, Nikon have tried to keep this thing's size down, giving it a collapsible design. Just turn the zoom ring to open it out with a firm click and start shooting. The lens's build quality is really lovely. Its bottom section is made of metal, with its markings etched into the surface, and the metallic lens mount is etched with a slight weather sealing gasket. The lens weighs about half a kilogram, or just over a pound. Then comes the customizable lens control ring. It can also be set in your camera's menu to change aperture, ISO, or exposure compensation. But its normal function is set to manual focus, where it responds very well to being turned. Whether you're zoomed in or out, the lens displays almost no focus breathing, and that's useful for video shooters. The lens's autofocus motor is silent, accurate, and very quick, as you can see here. Although I feel I should mention that it's not quite as fast as that one found in a Canon RF 24-105mm f4 lens on an EOS R camera, which, as you can see here, is like a bolt of lightning. The lens's zoom ring is very broad and rubberized, it turns averagely smoothly with just a little bit of stickiness to it, and the front of the lens extends rather a lot as you zoom in. The lens comes with a hood which, oddly enough, feels absolutely horrible to touch. It has an incredibly roughly textured surface. This lens does not have image stabilization built in, although if your camera has it built in, like my Z7 does, then obviously that's no problem. Its filter diameter is 72mm wide. Generally, the lens's build quality is pretty lovely. It feels like a high quality product. So, let's see now about image quality. I'm testing it here on my Nikon Z7 with its 45 megapixel full frame sensor. Let's start at 24mm. Straight from f4, the lens is incredibly sharp in the middle of your images with excellent contrast. Nice. The corners are softer, but still not bad at all, especially considering that we're shooting on such a very high resolution sensor. The image quality doesn't really improve as you stop down though. Here's f8. Stop down to f16, and the effects of diffraction begin to quite noticeably soften the image. Alright, let's zoom in a bit to 40mm. It's a similar story here, incredible image quality in the middle of your pictures, and very good image quality in the corners straight from f4. Stop down to f5.6 for a small improvement in those corners, but that is as sharp as they get. And finally, let's zoom all the way into 70mm. Again, a very similar story, excellent image quality in the middle, although not quite as incredibly pin sharp as it was at wider angles. Now the corners are noticeably softer. F5.6 only sees a small improvement in contrast in the corners, and F8 looks very slightly sharper, but that's as good as you're going to get. Well, overall, considering that this is a standard zoom lens trying to satisfy a 45 megapixel full frame camera, the performance is actually pretty fantastic. It could be slightly sharper at 70mm, but the performance is still very good there. Generally, resolution and contrast are great through the entire zoom and aperture range, and if you have a 24 megapixel full frame camera, you'll be particularly pleased too. So, let's move on and look at distortion and vignetting on a full frame camera. 
These are pictures shot in RAW format and converted using third-party software. At 24mm, we see tons of distortion and vignetting, really. Your camera will be working very hard to correct all that, which probably explains why the image corners were slightly softer. Even if you stop down the aperture, as far as f11, a lot of that vignetting remains. Zoom in to 30mm, and that distortion straightens out. At 50mm, it flips into strong pincushion distortion, which gets even worse at 70mm, and vignetting is strong at f4. Stop down to f5.6 or f8 to see that vignetting reduced, but not eliminated. A frankly disastrous performance here, Nikon clearly didn't bother to try and correct distortion or vignetting at all, and so the process of correcting your images finally will be a bit lossy on image quality. Well, anyway, let's move on and look at close-up image quality now. The lens can focus down to about 30 centimeters, pretty good for shooting smaller subjects when you zoom in. Close-up image quality sees reduced contrast at f4, but stop down to f5.6 for much punchier image quality there. Now let's see how the lens works against bright light. It's a really impressive performance. Contrast remains strong, and there's not too much flaring, even when you're zoomed in. Nice. Finally, bokeh. This lens should not be your first choice for getting out of focus backgrounds, but as I mentioned, zoom into your subject and at f4, you can get some nice results. Generally, the quality of this lens's bokeh is really lovely and smooth. No real problems to report here at all. Overall then, the Nikkor Z24-70mm f4s is a really lovely kit lens for Nikon's new Z-mount camera system. It has quite classy build quality, it's very sharp, it has nice colours, contrast and bokeh, and it'll be quite a good performer for video work. It only really has one skeleton in a closet, that appalling distortion and vignetting, which is thankfully corrected quite easily in your camera or in editing software, which you will definitely want to do. And it's hardly a cheap lens either, especially considering its unambitious zoom range and maximum aperture, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad value for money, as it really is a lovely piece of kit, so it comes recommended.